Yes, Sas. In the previous video, we worked through the sequential circuit design process for the 4 cent gumball machine. We reached this slide, which shows the basic structure of the circuit, including the two flip flops of state memory and the next state logic, which controls those flip flops. Now we'll conclude the design by showing the complete and operational circuit. This slide shows the final circuit with all the necessary bells and whistles. The fundamental logic that our design produced is still here. I just took advantage of the logic work shortcut of naming wires to reduce the clutter. I included the set and reset switches, which are necessary to establish the initial state of the machine, but probably wouldn't be used after that. I also replaced a true clock with a manual switch. This will just allow me enough time to change the input signal between clock cycles. Also, I added these two probes up here, which will allow us to monitor the state memory and verify correct operation. There is one significant change, however. I added this strobed D flip-flop after the output logic. The state memory is still in these two JK flip-flops like we saw on the previous slide. So this D flip-flop is not part of the state memory. It does not change the sequences of the circuit. All that it does is iron out a couple wrinkles in a Mealy machine. We discussed this more thoroughly in our earlier analysis videos, so I'll just provide the summary bullets here. This D flip-flop is strobed, i.e. it changes half a clock cycle later than state memory, in order to make sure that the output signal is correct. Also, it holds the output signal at a value for one full clock cycle. We will see this same basic setup tacked on to the end of many of our sequential circuits. Here is the circuit in the simulator. Normally, it's a good idea to have the state diagram handy in order to verify correct operation. But the operation of this vending machine controller is simple to remember. No penny, keep bank the same. Yes penny, increase bank by one. First, let's clear the state memory to initialize everything to zero. Then, I deactivate the clear switch. I will then flip X to be high. This represents adding a penny to the machine. Nothing changes yet. Why? Because we haven't had a clock cycle. I flip the clock, and now the bank, or the state memory, updates from 00, zero to zero 01. There is one cent in the machine. With the input still high, I flip the clock again, and now there are two cents in the machine. Good news so far. Once more, and the state memory shows three cents. Now, when I oscillate the clock one more time as a penny is being put in, we see that the output is high for the first time, meaning that the gumball should drop. Also, the state memory resets back to zero cents. Here, we can see part of the purpose of the strobed D flip-flop. That output will remain high for one more clock cycle, giving enough time to send the signal downstream. Let's drop the penny input low. When I flip the clock, the state memory doesn't change, but the output signal drops low. This is good. It means our machine won't keep dispensing gumballs. As long as a penny is not being deposited, the clock can keep drumming on, and the state memory will not change. Now let's add in one penny. I flip the input switch high. Then I run through one clock cycle. The state memory now shows one cent. I drop the input switch low, and now I can run the clock many times with that one cent remaining in memory. The same should happen at two cents. Let's add in that penny, then oscillate the clock. Let's stop adding in pennies and run the clock. Again, we see that the state memory holds on to the correct value. This will actually be the most common behavior of this circuit. There may be thousands of clock cycles in between the next penny being added. The clock keeps drumming, the circuit keeps remembering. And then we add one more penny, and now we see three cents in the machine. We wait there for a while. Then finally, one more penny makes the full four cents. So. 
the output signal goes high and the memory resets to zero. That is all for this demo. I hope you see the value of using a manual switch for the clock just as a teaching tool to give us time to make changes. I also hope you notice the general regions of this sequential circuit. The input signal up top, the next state logic feeding into the flip-flops, the state memory within the flip-flops, the output logic to produce Z, and the output signal. We will be using this basic structure often.